Well, hey, it's Rob, and uh, I'm here sitting in my garage in my 1983 Mustang 5.0 GLX, which turned 40 years old this year. Crazy to think. I haven't had it for 40 years. I bought it on Facebook Marketplace uh, three, four years ago, and it's been a great car. It does all the things a car should do, even 40 years on hasn't been restored. I don't think anyone's done any, you know, real extensive work to it. It has, I think, 75,000 original miles. It's just a nice, clean, original car that is perfectly functional, you know. I can start it up in the morning, go drive around, cruise around, wherever, with the top down. It's great. It doesn't overheat. It doesn't conk out or anything, you know out of the ordinary within reason <laughs> and uh, I can just enjoy this like any other car and I'm thinking my neighbor over there has a 2021 uh, Mach-E GT Ford Mach-E GT electric uh, SUV and I'm thinking in 40 years is there going to be anybody you know sentimental about the 2021 uh, Mach-E GT in 2061 is there going to be anyone who has it just under a cover in their garage and pulls the cover off one day and says, you know, hey, son, this is all yours. My stock original 2021 Ford Mach-E GT electric SUV. I just can't imagine it. And, you know, you just sit and think like, you know, Ford didn't think about this car lasting 40 years. This is not even a classic Mustang. Of course, people are crazy about the early 64 to 66 uh, Mustangs, the first Mustangs. Of course, they became an iconic car, and people love to, you know, drive the originals and collect them and restore them and all that kind of thing. This car is not that at all. This is from a real low point <laughs> almost in Ford history. Ford engineering in the 80s was not great, maybe better than the 70s, but... Uh, there's nothing particularly special about this car. They made a lot of them. And even 40 years on, I'm sure most have gone to the junkyard, but there could be, I don't know, 5% of them still out there on the road. Maybe 2 or 3% of them actually drivable like this one and, you know, can get some use out of it still. But uh, I can't imagine that <laughs> there are going to be any 2021 or of this era you know, Mach-E SUVs available 40 years from now. How could there be? I mean, first of all, the technology would be so outdated. There'd be no way you're going to have a phone that would be able to interface with CarPlay and all that kind of stuff. I can't imagine they're going to make retro phones 40 years from now that you can use to play music through your 2021 uh, Mach-E in 2061. So you're going to have limited functionality to begin with. The technology itself of the car is going to be so outdated, the, the navigation and the functions and things. I mean, whatever we'll have in 2061, maybe it'll be, you know, flying cars finally or whatever it is. But uh, it's just going to seem really outdated and quaint. Just like if you drive a car that's, I don't know, 15 years old now and it has an old blocky navigation, you know, with few details and whatever. And a big black and white screen or whatever it is. So it's just going to seem, I think, kind of unappealing, you know, to want to keep one of these cars for so many years. My 83 Mustang, basically, there isn't much on it that, you know, you can look at it and say, oh, God, you know, can you imagine that they had to deal with this back then? Maybe it could have a cassette deck, you know, which mine's been replaced uh, couple times by now I've got a Alpine CD player in here it's nice to have a CD even in 2024 because I've got a lot of CDs still but uh, other than like a little visual display down here which you can push and it has LED lights that show if your headlights are out or your taillights are working or whatever there's very little in here that's really kind of gone out of date it's a speedometer tachometer you know HVAC controls turn signals a horn I don't know I mean, you know, you sit in here and there's very little that you can look around and say, oh, what were, you know, what were they thinking back then? Or, oh, the things people had to deal with in 1983. I mean, the worst thing about this car is it has the horn on the turn signal stock, which was a terrible idea. 
and they did that for a couple of years and got rid of it but uh, other than that and that you have to push a button to get the key out of the ignition I think that was like an anti theft thing back then or whatever I don't know it's basically just a car and you can enjoy it as it is even 40 years on now 40 years from now I mean you got to think about the battery in an electric car is there going to be a battery available 40 years from now or even the individual cells if that's the kind of battery they have you know to replace on a 40 year old Mach E it just seems very unlikely even like when your electric car is 10 years old like people have Leafs and things like that that are 10 years old and need a replacement battery I mean the battery is you know twelve thousand dollars there's no way you're gonna put twelve thousand dollars into a whatever you know 10 year old Nissan Leaf or whatever you have a Prius or something so uh, you know it just becomes prohibitive and the cars become paperweights and I'm not anti EV I would love to have my neighbors mock E GT it's a fast car comfortable it's fun you know you can put a lot of stuff in it i have nothing against it but you know at the end of the day you know they're disposable technology basically it's great if you're the first owner maybe if you're the second owner a few years on but after 10 years like are you really going to want to deal with all the problems you're going to have with a you know any electric car i'm not just knocking the mock e or whatever a tesla or anything they're going to be you know getting to the point where that's the end of their useful life i mean you can go buy a tesla you know model s or whatever which is a very nice car and you can get a 2014 and it probably has 90 percent of the battery life still or whatever but at some point it's going to need a battery and that's like twenty thousand dollars if you need to replace a whole battery you know on a car like that i know you can replace individual cells or whatever but uh at some point, people are just not going to want to, you know, continue to, you know, keep these things going. Now, of course, I could put a $12,000 crate motor in this car, a Coyote, you know, 5.0 motor, and believe me, I would love to. But uh, if my motor failed on this, I could also find one for whatever, a few hundred dollars and have it put in here. It wouldn't be the end of the world. It wouldn't be a five-figure number to keep this car running if I, you know, got in that position and had to do that. But, uh, you know, 40 years from now, is any of this stuff even going to be available to restore a car like that? It's impossible. This car has a computer. It's the size of a pack of cigarettes. And I, that's it. I looked on eBay. I can get one for 30 bucks. I mean, when you're talking about a modern electric car, it's a computer on wheels. It is a multiple computer systems that all have to be networked together and working properly and is that stuff going to be in a catalog and stocked and you're going to have to you know do diagnostics and figure out which thing isn't working or whatever and replace it and i just think man it's very unlikely i saw a shop that uh, had the original tesla roadsters and they had 20 or 30 of these things piling up now and you know people might be sentimental for the tesla roadster it's a cool car my friend had one he drove it for years he finally sold it i think for pretty much whatever he paid for it matter of fact he was an early adopter i think he paid 50 grand instead of 100 for it and uh they looked after it the whole time he owned it and when he needed a replacement motor or anything they did it for free it was a pretty good deal but um i got to drive that car across the uh, golden gate bridge it was a very interesting experience it's like sitting in the bathtub but anyway you can see well maybe people would be sentimental about really the dawn of the age of the electric car and maybe that tesla roadster would represent that but uh even like 20 years from now or whatever i don't think there's going to be parts available and anyone's going to be able to restore and keep a car like that going it just seems unlikely like technology marches on and these are like on the bleeding edge of technology and i don't think people really look back you know at companies like tesla and want to like keep their old stuff going they want to get rid of it and sell you something new so uh you know and then you have to think well is that you know great for the ecology is you know is making a car that's going to be a brick in 10 years is that really like going to help save the earth like i don't know you know again i'm not anti-ev and uh, i think you know they're cool and i would love to own one we don't but um you know is anyone going to be in the position 40 years from now sitting in their you know, 40-year-old uh, vehicle, 
doing a YouTube video and uh, are they going to be able to just put a key in it and drive away? I really doubt it. I just can't imagine that there'll be, you know, that kind of interest to keep these cars going. They're all just going to end up in the junkyard and they're going to be full of leaking batteries and there's going to be all sorts of environmental issues they'll have to deal with. But uh, it just seems like, you know, the era of even in 1983, like I said, which is not the high point of Mustangs, but the era of being able to, you know, just casually keep a 40-year-old car running. And uh, I just bought this on Facebook Marketplace. Like I said, I didn't do anything fancy. I didn't restore it. I hardly have done anything to this knock on whatever this is. Knock on Naga Hide. But uh, this car just continues to run and it works. And, you know, I'm surprised by it sometimes. I think, wow. You know, every once in a while, I just get the realization this car was built in 1983. This car was built when Culture Club was on the charts. And, uh, you know, it's just incredible that, uh, you know, there's nothing special, fancy. It's not a, you know, unique model or whatever. It's just a run-of-the-mill Mustang convertible. And it still works. So, 40 years on, you know, I can't imagine that's going to be the case with my neighbor's Mach E GT or any uh, electric car of this era just seems like they are built for a specific period of time when they will function and work well like your cell phone and when it's done you take your cell phone and most likely you throw it in the trash well you're supposed to recycle things with batteries and whatever I'm sure most of them end up in the garbage so uh, that's just what I'm thinking about today and maybe 40 years from now if I'm still around Unlikely, but uh, I'll be proven wrong. But uh, I just can't imagine that uh, you know any 40-year-old electric car is going to uh, continue to be a functional, useful vehicle. Maybe even 20 years from now. I don't even want to give it 40 years. 20 years from now, you know, are we still going to see these things on the road or whatever? There's just no way that just the expenses of keeping them going are going to be just so prohibitive. Even if the stuff is available, I know there are earlier cars that were are not that old like i think the uh chevy volt not the bolt that you can't even get a battery for anymore you know and that's like a 10 year old car and they just even if you wanted to spend the money and for whatever reason you're sentimental about your volt even if you wanted to spend twelve thousand dollars like the batteries just don't exist like they just don't make them and they're just not there to even uh you know replace even if you wanted to and that's on a 10 year old car all right, so I've had a fun time sitting in my Mustang doing this video on a uh, rainy Saturday afternoon here in Atlanta. Thanks for watching, and all right, I'm going to honk my uh, stock horn. My <laughs> dog will probably bark, and that'll be that. We'll see you later. Yeah, yeah.